All right, guys, in today's video, we're gonna talk about why you shouldn't just turn during your backswing, a key element that you have to have in there if you wanna set up the correct downswing pieces so you can hit the ball solid, have a consistent swing, hit it high and far, all the things that we wanna have. JT and I work with a lot of different students that have the issues that we're gonna talk about in today's video. Obviously here with Mr. JT Thomas, appreciate you. Time, um, you guys have seen the videos with JT before, I'm sure we'll link his info down below if you wanna connect with him after today's video, highly recommended. JT, in this video, um, we're talking about the player who makes a backswing with the attempt of only turning, mm -hmm. uh, some of the problems that come along with that, some of the things you need to make sure you have in your backswing, and what we need to do on the way back to set things up really well on the way down, one or two really cool, cool drills. I think let's start with sort of showing why the side bend piece is so important. Yeah, for sure. Right? And so um, I know we like to do the visual. If I were to take my normal setup. Yeah, exactly. This is really easy, right? So you can, you can see that Eric's bent over towards the ground, right? So this is his spine angle. He's bent over. He's got to hit the ball on the ground. Now, we're going to talk about or show a bad version of a backswing where we would only turn, right? So what would that look like? only turn only turn you notice now completely lost this inclination that he's had he's, he's standing straight up now uh eric just stay there and don't try and hit the ball just swing where would the plane of your swing be yeah so right we're here. talking <laughs> yeah, we're talking <laughs> way three feet below where the uh, actual ball is so yeah. our brain's not going to let us do that sometimes you might top it or miss it really bad most of the time it's going to do the same thing so go back to that top of the back swing flat yeah. and then now how would i hit that ball right so I have to steepen my body, steepen the club, do a lot of steepening pieces. And now my brain's going to freak out, start to stand up. We get <laughs> yeah. all kinds of stuff. <laughs> so there's a classic swig that we see pretty often, right? And I, I think that's such a powerful thing where like, if we go back and we just turn, because all the time we see players try and just turn, just turn, just turn, and they don't have the second piece, which is the side bend. Yeah. And gosh, I think that's such a good visual, which is so true. Literally from here, we would miss it. <laughs> yeah. And the point that JT showed me when he first showed me this was, hey, Eric, what would you have to do here to get down to the ball? And just instinctively, I was like, okay, well, my body would have to re-bend over. Yeah. And automatically, without me doing anything, the shaft gets way, 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 way steep. Yeah. And so if you've seen yourself on video or a lot of the golfers we see, they're like, hey, my downswing's so steep, I can't fix it. Yeah. And they're like, well, you got to rewind the video a little bit mm -hmm. because what caused that was you went back looking like this, yes. which led to here. Yes. So I think that's such a powerful visual, JT. And so kind of let the cat out of the bag there a little bit, but the thing you need to have with the turn, cause you gotta turn. Gotta turn. We're not saying like don't. the title, don't turn. <laughs> yeah. It's just don't just turn. Yeah, don't just right? turn, yeah. So the second piece we need is side bend. Yes. And I know you have kind of this drill, if you walk me through this, um, to feel the side bend, if you wanna feel with, do with the turn. Yes, yeah. so um, great way to feel this side bend, yes. Hands to the side, you're gonna feel your back, like be very neutral, like just standing straight up and down, zero. What you want to happen is when you do this drill, you're gonna feel like you reach down and touch your lead knee without forward bend, so without changing your spine location and with also not changing much of your hip location. So the proper way would be how Eric's doing it right now. Okay. You can see he starts to have some crunch here on this lead side, some expansion there. Yep. What you wouldn't want, right, is so now Eric, do it bad where you move your hips. So he doesn't oh, really create any, see that a lot. right? So he just lowered, he got down to his knee, but not from actually bending his spine. And you won't feel any stretch here in the side. Versus if, this way. Yeah, versus if you do it this way, you're gonna feel much more of the stretch okay. um, through each side. So this this shouldn't go that way really at all when I'm doing this. No, okay. sh shouldn't go that way and at the all. And so I'm also not to your point from this side, I'm not I'm not going like You're not reaching towards the, way. yes, exactly. Okay. So you're Got not it. reaching down towards the front, you're reaching down the side of your leg. And when I do this once or twice, I kind of feel that that oblique crunch how do i combo this with the turn like what do i what do i do with that yes yeah, so now the feeling after this drill is one where you just take your left hand and you try to reach it over behind your right foot and i'm keeping this yes so, okay yes. so i'm not going like here and going oh okay. yeah exactly okay. yeah so, so you're here. staying in that position yep and then reaching back yeah reaching and you want to make sure you reach enough over your right foot so we don't want to kind of get stuck in this side bend um, which is again, probably maybe not the worst thing in the world for a lot of people out there, but um, we wanna make sure we are then starting to add in or blend some of that rotation. So, Got it, okay. So I'm not, I'm not just going like here. No. I'm yeah. not gonna just here. Nope. Okay. And one of the things when we're doing this, we'll, we'll do this with a club in a second, to kind of know that I'm blending these two together, 
Notice when I do the side bend from face on, if we drew the circle around my head, yeah. if there was just side bend and no turn, if you're the golfer that goes this way too much, where's my head go? Yeah, exactly. Too far forward. Yeah. But now as soon as I add in the rotation piece, mm -hmm. that's gonna bring my head back to where I started. Yeah. And the JT's point, how do I know I've done the rotation piece enough, too much, or too little, is more or less, you kind of finish where you started. Exactly. In that circle, yeah. more or less. Yeah. Um, so if I put a club in my hands, if I do that once or twice, I'm kind of doing that to get a feel. Yes, you're doing that to get a feel. And then I want to, how do I, and then I'm like, okay, let me try and transfer that when I swing a club. Yes, okay. exactly. So and I did gonna, that feel. You're going to try and recreate those feels. I would say, guys, when you're practicing this and trying to get these feels, right, that's the whole point of the drill, right? Yeah, exactly. Is to find that feeling. So we're looking for that feeling again. Well, and I know too, like one of my, if I, if one of my faults, if I have some faults that come in, you know, once <laughs> a while, would be that I tend to definitely go flatter at the shoulders. The arm starts to rotate and I go a little bit under this way. Yeah. So I, I right away when I feel this, if you guys are like me, the turning part feels pretty easy for me, but the, that feels like my body is closer to the ground mm -hmm. than normal. It may be, it feels in my mind like I'm maybe lowering an inch or two. Probably I'm just not going up mm -hmm. and as much as I normally do. Yes, exactly. But we're trying to like keep our inclination to the ground relatively close. Exactly. From the down line. Okay. Yeah. So I'm feeling that same thing kind of here mm -hmm. and then back behind me. Yeah. So obviously that looks quite a bit different than this would be the bad. Yeah here exactly and i know like there's a couple of main reasons we want to do this in the first place yep. one of them builds in something on the way down i like the way you say that yeah you remember the yeah so uh essentially what i said was we're, we build in the steepness on the way back so meaning we build in hitting the ground on the backswing mm. um and so that's a really big deal yeah and again it, it makes your brain feel like i have a i don't have to hit the ground on the way down which again is what we see in so many poor golfers so many poor golfers tell their brain that they're not going to hit the ground and they're like, how can I hit the ground? I gotta hit the ground, the ball's on the ground. That is such a big concept. I hope that's like not so simple that it goes over and we don't get that. Oh, if you're someone like me sometimes too, where I would go flatten up, and I gotta really work to take a divot yeah, yeah. and hit the turf. What JT's saying there, and I'm saying this again, even for myself as much <laughs> as you. So when we do the side bend piece, I'm keeping my body's inclination to the ground, the hitting the ground's already built in. Yes. So the hitting ground's already built in. So if anything, I'm actually reducing how hard I hit the ground on the way down, Gosh, which, is, which is what we want. And so that's such a big deal for golfers who uh, can't figure out how to create a low point, or can't figure out how to have a nice divot. They either take too big of a divot or don't take a divot at all. This would be how we do that. So yeah, uh, really big deal here. We build it in on the way back. Yep, so good. Yeah. That was really and Sometimes really good. I think too when we do these videos and I'm like, gosh, I hit it as good as I can, but I do. I hit it freaking good when we're filming <laughs> yeah, these things. For sure. Really, so, really does. So when we go back, that's building in the hitting the ground. Yep. It also has an effect on the shaft pitch. Yes, kind exactly. of there's like a benefit number one, right, of doing this on the way back is building and hitting the ground. But benefit number two, like if I do it bad versus good, how does that change the shaft? Yes, exactly, because it changes your forearm. So how how your shoulders work with your spine directly correlates with how this mass of your club and how your forearms roll. So for example, let's do the bad version. Yep, so your arms are just listening to your shoulders, right? Yeah. So it's gonna be very hard for you to even try that. We On the backswing, we see a lot of really good golfers with the shaft a little bit steeper than where we started, or maybe just on plane, let's say. Like a good like a good one would be like here. -ish. Yeah, okay. yeah, exactly. And so we would want that to, to kind of match up, and that helps us, again, hit the ground. So when we go back, if I do the shoulder piece correct, that also helps keep that club kind of riding right up the plane line, you're yes. saying. Yep. But if I went too flat with the shoulders, that would also go too flat with the club. Yes. And just like, God, that just, when you go back, if you're getting farther from the ground and turning, and you gotta try and find it, there's only one way you're gonna go, which <laughs> is this way, you know? And it's actually pretty good. If you can do that and still hit the ball, you should be proud of yourself. Yeah, you're an anomaly. <laughs> yeah, you should yeah. be proud of yourself. It's pretty hard. So I'm gonna feel that same thing. And again, how do I know I'm doing it too much or too little when you're watching from face on? There's some shadow drills you can do, but more or less, you draw the circle around your head, your head should stay yep. pretty much in that circle. If I do it bad, watch how my head goes way to the right. You can have some rightward motion, but right? we're not saying you need to be perfect there, but that's kind of the how much or how little. Yep. Okay, so I'm gonna feel the same thing, steepening on the way back. 
And you were saying with that too, JT, that was pure. Yeah, so good. You were saying with that too, because I need a little bit more of that. Yeah, for sure. We steepen it on the way back and have the side bend. Mm -hmm. And then we got a shallow, like that gives us the opportunity to be able to shallow that on the way down. Yeah. Like if I want good right side bend and good downswing pieces, I need to actually have good left side bend first on the way back. Exactly. So a lot of times your brain's goal, you guys have to understand this. I know it might seem so simple, but it understands our goal, which is to hit this ball that's on the ground. Okay. And so we, we're very aware of that. And so if we aren't doing things that tell our brain we're going to hit the ground, we're going to find ways to hit the ground. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. Yeah. So, so like meaning if I go like this and I'm like, and I go here, mm -hmm. that doesn't tell me I'm going to hit the ground. No. So, so I'd have to find it this way. Yeah. And there's no way from, from here, I'm going to, I want to go here. No, I would no never way. hit the ball. Never hit the ball. Exactly. So, you so it's miss. really what I'm doing on the way back. That makes it a big deal. One last little nugget with this too, is just when you do, when you do this, you know, just how you describe the backswing, right? So if you're too far away from the ball and the backswing, right? Uh -huh. what's one way you could get the club to the ground, right? Make it longer, Ooh. right? So now yeah. I'm just letting go of these angles, doing so many things. I mean, there's so many. So if I'm tall and away from the ground, there's one way I can get to it. How do I do that? This way. So, so, so many people want to fix that part. Okay, so so if I go here, and maybe I don't do that as a reaction necessarily, yeah. but I'm still, I still got to get to the ball with the early Somehow. release. Exactly. Uh -huh. So there's so many ways. We're going to fix 20 things yeah. just by you understanding how to do this in the backswing. So if you've been searching for what should I do in my backswing, I can't fix this, I can't fix that. If you start here, just let your brain work for you. Some brains are a little bit better than others, but yeah. let it work for you a little bit <laughs> yeah. to help you figure out these other pieces near impact. So. so good, dude. Like building and hitting the ground on the way back, you're going to notice, again, like JT said, if you're the flat, especially in the takeaway, if you've been going inside and rolling way too much, that shoulder's almost Probably. guaranteed going too high with it. Yeah. Keep that, keep that side bend on the way back. And I really like that. Thank you, dude. Yeah, I really you. like that little drill like that. Like that's such an easy way to feel it. And then you go in with a club right away. So yeah. These are so good. I feel like we should do this twice or three times a year. Like it's so important that we can do yeah. the same videos over and over. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Any questions, always leave a comment down below. If you want to hook up with JT for in person, if you can get with him, I wouldn't wait too long. We'll put his info <laughs> down below. Put JT's info, uh, Instagram down there. They can contact you through there. Yeah. Um, any questions, always leave a comment down below. Appreciate you guys watching.